Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to start our exterior wall framing. And as you can see, this is a rake wall. However, it is not gonna go where it's at. It's actually gonna go to the left where that guardrail's at. So let's get into this video. There's a few things that I want to cover. One, why I think you should sheathe your walls before you lift them. And then basically the video is gonna cover how do we go about doing that? Then we're gonna get into how we're gonna rig this wall. And finally, we are going to set the wall. Oh, and one last thing, we are going to brace the wall. And I'm gonna put a countdown timer on there so that you can see why it is that we brace the way we do. But I'm gonna discuss that as we get into the end of the video. So let's jump in. We are going to mix and match the answers to those first two questions. Why I think you should, and then how do you go about doing it? First of all, you notice that we have a line of four by six blocking right where I'm standing, and I'm snapping a line. The top of those blocks actually will match the top of our interior walls. We lay it out so that the center of those blocks is going to be our panel edge. So it's our panel edge blocking, and our seam is going to center on that four by six. Measuring down eight feet, that's our line of two by six flat blocking. All of that came out of scrap. So here's the order of operations. Our walls are square. Our sides are square to the bottom plate. Remember we did that in the previous video. I snapped a line down the center of those blocks. Now I'm making sure that this first sheet is dead center on that first stud, all the way down. I don't care about the outside of my wall. I was taught you don't look at that, even though everything was laid out and it should match. We wanna make sure that our seams land centered on studs. So in an earlier clip in the intro, you could see that as I was blocking with the four by six blocks, I was measuring to make sure that my four foot, eight foot, 12 foot, 16 foot, 20 foot, 24 foot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all are right on the money. Sometimes framing big walls, the studs can get squirrely. We wanna make sure that our seams land so that, or <laughs> I could say that, I could say that again. <laughs> We want to make sure that our seams land centered on studs. Okay. okay. The other trick is, as you're uh, laying the sheets, is you don't want to nail the middle of the sheet, but sometimes the sheets can be curly. You want to work the curl out, so you start one edge to the other. So I'm tacking it in a way that the sheets are nice and flat. Okay, so why do I think everyone should be sheathing their walls before they lift them? It's because it's a whole lot faster, period. It's just faster. There's no ladder work. We can notice, I mean, we're just yanking the sheets right off the forklift there. So we have staged everything so we don't have to go very far. When you're nailing, it's actually easier to nail at the correct spacing and quality control that we're not overdriving and make the adjustments when we're not on a ladder because we're also standing on the panel. So that keeps the panel tight. It's far safer to do it this way. So it's faster, the quality goes up, it's safer. There's really no reason not to do it. And because our walls are square and our floor is level, everything will be plumb. Now, having said all of that, you also need a way to lift these walls because they do get heavy. Okay, I forgot to timestamp when we got done framing. It doesn't matter. We, we, it'll be done. I'm gonna route all this stuff off. Kyle's gonna nail it. We have uh, four by six blocking on the, on the seam right through there. Flat blocking, this is actually going to connect all the way down to the mud cell, um, depending on which wall. This wall is actually gonna go where I'm standing, not over here. Isn't it beautiful today? So, some of you might be wondering, how come we've not staggered our sheets? We don't need to, why would we? This wall only needs three sheets, maybe four, to meet lateral loads, and we have, what do we have? Uh, what is this thing, 48 feet? So we got six, Running that way, plus all these, everything's connected, solid block. This is gonna be a way stronger wall than it ever needs to be by like nine orders of magnitude. Pop, pop. Okay, I'll do the window. Okay, I did a lot of bad math there. The back wall's 48 foot, this wall's 38 foot. So, I still yeah, only needed four sheets foot. total. So, yeah, this the fine. same point. Laterally <laughs> speaking, or for sheer, we are way, way over and above. Uh, what we need to to meet our earthquakes here in seismic zone d2 okay so let's get into this this is probably my favorite tool on the job site we have been using routers since 2001 when i saw another framer using a router 
only for the last year were we smart enough to finally put it on a floor scraper so that we don't need to bend over. Now, a couple things I want to mention. One, Kyle didn't need to be standing there to hold those sheets, but it is kind of nice. Those sheets are going to be held as scrap. They're perfectly routed to the edges, which means that we can reuse them without any wonky cutting. Coming up the rake wall, I can just follow the plates. Basically, here's the rule of thumb. You always want what you're cutting against or routing against to be on your left. Windows, it's clockwise. In this case, my, if my framing is on the left, then that bit's going to pull itself through and stay nice and flush. Ask me how many times I've done it backwards. <laughs> and then the bit just goes right off to the side. So I think number two might actually work. Boy, that sure seems like a waste of material, right? Wrong. We've got a whole lot, well, quite a few more rake walls to build, so we're going to use up all that scrap there, and yeah, if you want to tackle some of it on this wall, we can even use up in a different spot on this wall. <laughs> that was awesome. That's been so easy. Have to do some dialing. <laughs> I should mention too, this little DeWalt router is coming up on, I believe, four years in use. I don't think we're ever going to burn it up. Like uh, one um, furniture maker told me on Instagram, because people are like, you're going to burn up that router. He's like, these things are made to route oak. I think you're okay with OSB. Now, Zip is a denser OSB. The glues and resins in it are a lot harder on bits and blades. But even so, we get multiple houses out of a bit. Now that's cutting all of the rake wall top plates, all windows and doors. So they're not, they're not cheap. They're on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I want to say they're like 40 or 50 bucks. So they're not cheap. Make sure that when your guys are nailing that they don't nail or leave nail heads proud. Uh, once we got that dialed in like 20 years ago, we never hit nails unless we have a new person. But I try to remember to explain that right off the bat. So anyway, anyway, now it is just a matter of cleaning up while Kyle nails off. Our nailing schedule is six inches on the edges. That is what gives us our lateral strength. And then eight inches in the field, we're going to aim for all of the dots. Once it's all nailed off, we're going to tape our seams. So here's how I tape productively and you keep it pretty straight. Notice that you basically go about like every three or four feet pulling it straight. And since they've got those nice little guide marks, I can just kind of hop and skip across, the, across and smooth it with my hand. Remember, or between the legs. Now look at that. I could just kind of like, it's kind of a dance. Yes, it's bent over. No one wants to be bent over. This is why we trade everything off. You notice I just smoothed it with my hand as I went. I'm going to cut it off and then we're going to roll that tape. You have to roll the tape. It's a pressure sensitive acrylic adhesive. Pressure sensitive acrylic adhesive here. Said that without slurring my words. Okay, so while I had to run and get nails and start to get prepped for our overhangs, now Kyle can uh, run through and tape all the seams. Here's an advantage of not staggering your seams, is you can literally just run top to bottom or bottom to top. We ran the horizontal seam first so that these seams overlap it. However, that doesn't matter because as you can see in between all of the panels, well, the tape is just stuck to the panel. This is a self-terminating flashing. That's part of how the system is designed. Later, when we get to the roof videos, we actually just finished this this last week. I will shoot a bunch of video with it raining outside because we use the same product, but the thicker panel on the roof, and you will see where there's no drips coming in. So you can get drips if you scuff the tape, but we will get into that in a future video. Anyway, here's another advantage. Not only have we installed all of our sheathing, it's all routed, everything is nice and flush, but now it's taped, which means all we got to do is hang windows and we can start to side. Extremely efficient. We don't want to duplicate steps and we certainly don't want to duplicate steps off of ladders or staging. Now, 
I'm going to leave this clip in real time just to show what this process looks like in real time. <laughs> Also, because we had the music playing, I have to just talk over it because I don't want to trigger the YouTube copyright algorithm. Anyway, so as we mentioned, it was, it's an acrylic adhesive that is pressure sensitive. If you ever use any of these products, there's other companies that make tapes that are acrylic adhesives. Put a piece on the wall, smooth it with your hand, do another one and roll it, and then come back in a couple of days and just um, try to peel it off the wall. And you'll see it really makes a difference rolling the tape. Okay, just roll the tape. At the same time, we do want to make this as easy on ourselves as we can. So this whole wall we built bent over, right? So at least the guy rolling the tape <laughs> gets to stand up at this point. So it just screws onto a fiberglass painter's pole. We used to use wood, but they broke over time. Fiberglass lasts quite a while unless we hit one with a forklift, which has been known to happen. I think this one's a year and a half, two years old. I'm pretty particular about rolling the tape if there was such a thing as rolling too much, I want to be that guy. <laughs> you can't overroll the tape. But what I have found is, is that you roll the tape and then if you stand back and you look at it with the light on the tape, you can see what you've missed. So just really, really, this whole system depends on how well we install the tape. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the overhangs. We're talking about efficiency, right? That's why we sheathed the wall. Now let's build overhangs. So the way I like to build overhangs is I, we, first of all, you notice that we ran our top plates all the way to the top of the roof plane. And I'm going to show you that when we get into the roof framing, um, how that works out when we set rafters. I nail a two by six onto that wall. I have a double top plate. And so I'm nailing about six inches on center into those plates. And part of the reason for that is that's going to give me a lot of strength for our overhangs. Our overhangs are only 12 inches. I'm using LP smart side soffit that's 16 foot long, 12 inches wide, and that basically acts like a strong back on our wall. So those plates are nice and straight, we're flat to the floor, but then also this soffit's gonna keep that wall very stiff as we go up. Now, usually I'll pre-cut them, but this wall was longer than what I had for material, so you notice that I ran it long. Our, our horizontal soffit is 16 inches, but then 16 and a half with our wall sheathing once it connects. And I always give myself a quarter to play. So 16 and three quarters. But we have found over time that if we make these overhangs 17 inches, that they're going to flush up right perfect. And I will show you that in a future video. It might even be the next video. We'll see. I'll show you how all of this interconnects and the things that I still want to improve. Okay, so what Kyle's doing is he's nailing off six inches on center again, because we're going to make this act like a beam, so to speak, or a strong back, with siding nails and the siding gun. While he's doing that, he can work it so it's nice and flush with the top of our overhang framing. Then I'm just grabbing the LP Smart Side, and this is not sponsored. We just love those products. I do not work with LP Smart Side. We are huge fans. I know there's going to be some comments below of people who hate it. The haters really come out, but... We can talk about that in a future video. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this. Five quarter by eight, LP smart side trim. I put the plumb cuts together at the top. Oh, also when you do the overhangs, put a piece of metal across the overhangs behind the fly rafters or barge board. That'll keep them together as you lift. Okay, the rest of it's just standard. Here we've calculated the diagonal for our bracing. We push up so that it's square to the wall and then plus an eighth, and then we nail those. All right, and now let's get into the wall lift itself. This is what we've been waiting for. All the rest of it's pretty standard, easy stuff, right? This is dangerous. Quick primer on the rigging. I am reinforcing the plate to stud connection where we are going to be rigging. I'm using strong tie SDW6, uh, SDWC six inch screws. The load tables are right there on their website. These are actually made to hold rafters or trusses to top plates, and they're stronger than an H1 hurricane clip. It's my favorite sound on the job site. Mm -hmm. That and my singing voice. Strong tie makes both the H1 and this screw, and you can compare the load tables on their website. Um, for all these years, we did not reinforce these um, pick points, but I'm reinforcing them now. This is actually a new way of rigging walls that we learned from Ben Morton. Probably the best framer in the country. Also super smart guy that is rigging certified as well as we are. But he like took it a whole step further and he got crane certified. So 
is a genius. A one inch hole, and then we're gonna run our slings through that, and then we're gonna connect our shackles. Now obviously this step was taken before we sheathed the wall. This is not the same wall that you've seen in this video because, well, it, it's possible we forgot to do this. <laughs> so change it up our order of operations. The shackle is rated for I think five tons. The strap, I forget what its rating is, but basically each of our rigging points is about three or four times stronger than the actual weight of the wall. So we have like a four or five times safety factor. A part of the reason why we rigged it that way is because as you go up, the, the forces change, right? So at about the halfway point, more and more of the weight is on the floor until the wall comes up, right? And then all of it is on the forklift and rigging. Okay, this was an odd pick. I had Noah in the machine. He is forklift certified. I am also forklift certified. We just got re recertified last spring. So I'm signaling as the experienced person. Kyle also has um, rigging experience from like oil platforms or something. So glad to have him on board, that's for sure. So I got in the machine once the wall was up because we knew we were going to set it down and then shift. The ground where the forklift is at is very unlevel and there's some bumps there. And so even though this took longer than I would have liked it to have taken, because it happened safely, then to me, it was worth every cent or every, every minute, every cent, <laughs> every minute. Okay, so you notice that we had set it down, disconnected the rigging, and then I moved again so that all I needed to do was go up and out. And I'm in the machine, Kyle and Noah are up here at this point, and they can signal me and explain what needs to be done. I also can see what needs to be done. This trust jib from Cornerstone Industries, I will try to remember to put a link below out of South Dakota. It's just awesome. You notice how we could flip that wall around? Just made it nice and simple. One thing to point out too is you saw that we left the sheathing off from that block line down that's about a foot. That's going to connect to our lower floor top plates and those rips ended up being just shy of 24 inches. That was all planned so that we didn't have to waste material. Okay, now it is time to brace the wall so Noah and I trade places because we need somebody in the machine, not just in case we need to go up or down or lean, but really primarily for safety, even though the machine's off at that point. Now, let me show you how we rig tall, or how we brace tall walls, and this is only one brace. We'll do this at least three. Usually we'll have walls ready to go to lock in at the corners, but we didn't in this case. So first of all, 20 foot brace that has a screw, a timber screw, structural screw up high where Kyle's at. Then I'm gonna go ahead and screw a cleat to the floor. But before I did that, notice that I rode the saw on top of the cleat and cut that brace to an angle. And the reason why we want that is so that we can get at least two fasteners through the brace into the cleat. Now nails are extremely weak in withdrawal. That's why we don't, we don't nail our brace to the ground. 10 years ago, we had winds take a, a wall off of the floor, even though I had like eight braces on it. I mean, I braced the snot out of it. All of those nails in the cleat are what failed. So we fasten that down. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fasten it. Kyle has the laser four inches off the bottom plate. When he gets to four inches at the top, we fasten the wall. Now, for some of you, you think, oh, this is the slowest way to brace. Well, how much time is it gonna take you to put the wall back? You gotta factor that in. Second, when we go to take braces down, it's way quicker okay, than beating on a brace and then pulling nails. And you best be pulling nails we don't allow any nails to be sticking up. And let's leave it there. I'll climb down off my soapbox. <laughs> you definitely, in all of our years, we've never stepped on nails because I was taught you never, if you pull braces, you pull nails right away. Anyway, getting off my soapbox. Thank you everybody for watching. If you feel like it, hit that like and subscribe button. And hey, we got whole lots more framing. So we're gonna get it. We're just gonna keep rolling through this house. Lots and lots and lots of videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you.